everybody, I'm Chrissy Jordan with southernplate.com and I'm excited to sit down and chat with you today about something that is near and dear to my heart because it's that time of year again. No, not what you're thinking. Well, some of you may be thinking it is time to pack shoe boxes. This is an Operation Christmas Child shoe box um, that goes through Operation Christmas Child. They take these shoe boxes filled with gifts, um, all kinds of different gifts and things and they deliver them to needy children around the world, in all countries of the world um, that I know of. I know children in the United States get them, children in other countries. I have personally been on two mission trips with Operation Christmas Child to deliver shoe boxes. I have been to Ecuador with them for a week, delivering shoe boxes to a new place every day. And then I've been to um, the Dominican Republic, also another week there. We went to different villages every day and delivered these shoe boxes. So I've got to see, I've had an opportunity to see firsthand what a huge difference these shoe boxes make in the lives of these children. Um, and honestly, I look at, from what I have seen with my own eyes, every box is a miracle. Absolutely a miracle. And I have, I have visibly seen the hand of God move on these trips. It's just been an amazing thing. It's really been amazing to me. So I have packed this shoe box and I want to show y'all what I have in my shoe box. Now you don't you can pick up one of these shoe boxes or you can go buy a plastic shoe box or use a shoe box around your house. You can fill it with gifts and then you go online to Samaritanspurse.org forward slash OCC for Operation Christmas Child and find out where the nearest drop-off point is. The collection week is coming up. It is the third week in November. Every year it's the third week in November. And then you just find the location, drop it off. If you would like though, you can also build a shoe box online on the OCC website. Go to samaritansfirst.org forward slash OCC. You can actually build a shoe box online and just kind of pay for it with your credit card. Another thing you can do that a lot of people do is that it costs seven dollars for each of these shoe boxes to get to their destination. All the shipping, all the, you know, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes in getting these. So seven dollars is a bargain to get this to some, a child in goodness knows where. <laughs> um, any part of the world, seven dollars. So you can go online and just make a monetary donation and help those shoe boxes get places. You can give that money to your church if they're doing OCC. Um, but anyway, I want to get into this. I want to show you what is in my shoe box this year. Okay, so I packed this shoe box for a girl between the ages of, I think it was, yeah, five to nine. Now, you, what you do is you go online and you print out a label for a boy or a girl and you choose the age. The age ranges are two to four, five to nine, and 10 to 14. And, you know, just follow your heart with which age range you feel like you need to pack for. If you're packing multiple shoe boxes, maybe you wanna cover a boy and a girl in every age range. Today, this is for a five to nine year old girl. And I wanted to do that because my daughter is 11 and I just kind of, uh, that's where my heart is right now because I have a daughter so I'm more familiar with that. Um, and then, but also because she's 11 living in our privileged country that we live in right now, um, her life is much easier than it is for a girl over there. Um, so things for her age range, like an 11 year old over there is probably our, uh, over there. I'm thinking of some of the countries I've gone to. Um, a lot of 11 year olds are already working full time. Um, some of them don't ever have a chance to go to school, so they're staying at home taking care of multiple children. Um, so in order to have gifts and things that kind of go with her age range in another country where life is a little harder, um, I'm assuming it's gonna be another country, you never know. I have to go down an age range. Now, I saw a seven year old. I met a sweet little seven year old. Um, I believe it was in Ecuador. And she had a baby tied to her back. And it was her little baby sister. And I asked one of the translators, I said, how old do you think she is? And he asked her and she said she was seven. I said, is that normal for her to be caring for an infant? And he said, oh yeah, by the time they're seven, they're already caring for younger siblings, cooking, taking care of the house because both parents go out during the day to try to make money. And so, you know, it's just, it's a very different life, a very different way of, um, I don't know it, it kind of changes your thinking a lot so anyway let me stop lollygagging and show you what is in my shoe box okay so first of all well i kind of i try to cover a variety of areas when i pack a shoe box um so i'll try to kind of bring these out in order okay um let's talk about like personal things 
So there's a, a wash rag. Y'all probably call it a washcloth for you. It's a wash rag rolled up. Um, this is kind of in the personal hygiene area. Um, kids love having their own washcloth. It's a big deal, you know, and especially in countries where you don't have 10 of them stacked in a bathroom or a bathroom. Um, then I have two pairs of socks. That is surprisingly, somebody said it was one of the most sought after items. I don't know, but I put two pairs of socks in there. Um, I have a bar of ivory soap. We do ivory. Ivory is preferred because it floats. So, you know, they're going and um, bathing or washing clothes in creeks and streams and things. If they drop the soap, it floats. They pick it up, no problem. Um, I also have a little um, pretty pink Hello Kitty toothbrush and some toothpaste. And this little plastic pouch is going to be so handy to them. I mean, just every little thing gets used. But this little plastic pouch is going to be a big deal. Um, and I have a small package of underwear for a little girl. Then moving on into let's do beauty <laughs> beauty they're all beautiful all the children are beautiful but i got her, her own little brush and um a pack of ponytail holders and they're nice bright colors i thought that would be nice um and then i found these this is like the last pair at walmart actually um i just got some flip-flops um shoes are kind of hard to come by in a lot of these places very hard to come by these flip-flops are a different brand. They're much sturdier than the... I, went, I, I would like to find some really nice ones, but this is just not the time of year. Um, but these are pretty sturdy. And another thing is, regardless of the size, you can trim them to fit. But they'll just... I've seen, I've seen kids with feet this tiny wearing shoes like this. Um, so that's not important. They're just proud to have shoes. Um, also, I have in here is a flashlight. A nice LED flashlight. And I have some batteries. Um, this is worth its weight in gold of course keep in mind that they're not going to be able to get more batteries so you give them the batteries and a flashlight it already comes with batteries as well and it's just a real treat you know because most of the kids that are going to be getting these shoe boxes do not have electricity so to be able to have a flashlight at night it's amazing um then i have pencils and pencils <laughs> never underestimate pencils i've actually heard of some countries where um the kids were allowed to go to school as long as they had their school supplies. They had to provide their own school supplies. And getting pencils in a shoebox makes a difference between being able to go to school and not. Now, I did forget something. The Cardinal Rule. If you pack pencils, pack a pencil sharpener. And I forgot to pick up a pencil sharpener. So I'm going to get in a small pencil sharpener and putting that in there as well. I also thought this would be nice. Um, and, you know, just follow your heart when you're shopping for things. Think practically, you know. But, um... I mean, you don't want to put certain things would be ridiculous to put in, like a uh, DVD or something like, you know, it's, there's, it's not going to be used. There's, they have no way to use it. But um, certain things, like I thought, oh, a notebook. So she can draw, she can write in this, she could use it for a journal, you know, she may end up giving it to her mom. Um, these children are very generous with their shoe boxes, and I've seen a lot of kids, um, you know, if their whole family wasn't there, they go home and they share you know, they, they're looking for something out of their shoebox to give everybody in their family. So I thought that was nice. Another thing, and like I said, follow your heart. Um, the Holy Spirit is going to take these shoeboxes and make sure they go to the right people. And so when I was picking up that flashlight, something, I just had this nudging feeling to get two flashlights. So I did. Um, and these are the really nice batteries. It's a new kind of battery that's supposed to be the longest lasting battery um, that that Rayovac makes. So I got that. Now these, another nudging, I was at Hobby Lobby and these are bandanas. And I don't know, I walked by and I just thought, those of you who understand what I'm saying know exactly what I'm saying. And those of you who don't, I hope you will experience. Um, and I just thought, I need to stop. I need to get two of those. And so I got two. Um, there's a theme of twos in here. <laughs> I have, um, and that's probably because I've seen so many shoe boxes like we went to this one event and there were supposed to be about a hundred children and the, you, you arrange it with local area pastors and leadership ahead of time you find out exactly how many kids in their ages and then OCC brings in shipments of shoe boxes and make sure there's one for everyone well there was supposed to be about a hundred kids and we ended up with almost double that and they got word that we were coming people came in from other villages and stuff and it just got to be a madhouse. I mean, people were, you know, it was, it was a, the church 
um, no electricity or anything. It was kind of like a stone building, and there were bars over the windows. And they ended up locking the church doors, and we were all in there. And uh, more people were trying to get in and trying to get us to open the doors and let them put their kids in and stuff. And so we were determined to come up with enough something for every kid to have something. And that was one of several miracles I experienced on trips with OCC. We ended up coming, we, we went back to the bus, we went through our backpacks, we went through our purses. Um, somebody had some gallons of what bags and we ended up coming with enough stuff. Not everybody got a shoe box, but everybody had like a shoe box worth in a plastic Ziploc bag. And I mean, it was, it was amazing. But I saw this one kid, um, I had, when, when you go into it like that, if you have, you can personally deliver your shoe boxes. So that day I was delivering a shoe box my mom had put together. And um, this grandmother was there with her two grandsons. Um, they, they had, they'd never really had a dad involved in their life and their mother had passed away. And she was raising them on her own and they were about 10, 11 years old. And, you know, this is when right in the middle of the big, oh my goodness, we're having a major shoebox shortage moment. And I handed mom a shoebox to her. And she opened it up and my mother had overpacked everything. And there was two of just about everything in there. And it was her and these two boys. And there were, um, there was a whole pack of socks. And there were a couple pairs of underwear. And there were two packs of pencils, two pencil sharpeners. Two, I mean, there was all this candy. There was, I mean, it was just like everything I pulled out I'm thinking wow you know but I mean God nudged my mom to pack that shoe box and she thought she was packing it for one but God knew she was packing it for two so I don't know I just felt an urging with this shoe box so a couple things are duplicated um now here's my almost my last two things I know again is the twos these are these cute little dolls um that you can get like at Walmart they're 250 each and Katie really likes them. They're kind of like little miniature Barbies. Only they actually pretty much look like little girls. <laughs> um, and so I picked up two of those as well. I had to take them out of the packaging in order to fit everything into my shoe box. You're going to get creative with that. I'm also going to probably end up having to take this, these, my underwear for her out of the packaging as well. Maybe even my batteries. And the last thing I put in my shoe box, and I'm going to try to find room to squeeze more in here, is some nice hard candy in a Ziploc bag. Um, you know, all kids love candy. It's a treat. So I'm going to put some more, uh, fill a couple more bags of candy and stick that in all the nooks and crannies. You get real good at packing this stuff. So I've got this whole table of stuff and I managed to get it all in this one shoe box. So this is going to be, I'm actually shipping this to Operation Christmas Child Headquarters tomorrow. I'm shipping my shoe boxes direct this year. And uh, if you would like to pack a shoe box, if you would like more information on packing a shoebox, go to SamaritansPurse.org forward slash OCC. I highly recommend this. It's amazing. And there's one other thing I'm missing that we're going to write today. And that's a letter to the child who gets the shoebox. Um, just thanking God for them. Telling them you're praying for them. You can kind of introduce yourself. You can even put your name and address. And sometimes the translator may write you back. There's usually a translator there when they hand these out. Um, and you may get a letter back from them or from the translator. You don't know, you know, but I know that when I would see kids open the shoe boxes, if they got a letter, they would hold it up and, <gasps> and run, you know, to the translator and want them to read the letter to them, you know, so it's a very big deal finding a letter in a shoe box. And, uh, yeah, this is a very special, very special ministry, very near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm going to put a couple links to some posts under this that I made when I was on my Operation Christmas Child Trips and about my Operation Christmas Child Trips. And there's also a video um, where uh, that features me with Operation Christmas Child um, where I was given a gift to a little girl of a doll that Katie had picked out for her. I went to, it was in Ecuador, we went to this church, which is all outdoors, and there was this little girl and she was holding this baby doll. And it, the baby doll had been through it. Let me just say that. And they said that it belonged to the school. And every day she came and she wanted to get that one baby doll. Now this girl was probably about, I don't know, maybe three or four years old. She was tiny. And she, that was her baby doll. She loved that baby doll. Well, I had a baby doll in a shoe box that me and Katie had picked out. And when she opened it, 
I don't know. It was just something. It was. So you have to see that video. That was very touching. But um, you know, God uses us. God moves. Um, and I feel like you know, there's so many wonderful causes out there, and I support several. If God puts something on my heart, He also tells me how I can support it. And so I feel like if we all followed the callings that were put on our that that are put on our heart, all the bases would be covered. You know. So like for me, um, I love to do Operation Christmas Child. I I have a my own little ministry where I. Um, Try to provide gifts for um, residents in nursing homes um, and then there's several other ministries that I support you know when the opportunity arises some I have regular things that I support every month um, and you know just sometimes you're walking down the street and you just you listen to those nudges on your heart but follow your heart and uh, if this is something that you feel called to do I highly encourage you to do this because it is one of the most rewarding, exciting things that I've seen in action. I've actually seen it and it's amazing. So I'm going to get everything back in the shoebox. I'm going to write my letter and go find that pencil sharpener <laughs> that I forgot to buy. I've got to go get a pencil sharpener. Then I'm going to, I'll print off my label that tells the, that this is for a girl in age, age range 5 to 9. And I will put it all in here and I'll wrap a single rubber band around it. I'm not going to tape it or anything. I'm just going to do a single rubber band around it. Because this is going to go to OCC headquarters. They open up every shoebox. Make sure everything's okay and safe to travel. Um, make sure there's nothing that's inappropriate in there. There's always some fun tales about some of the things that people put. There's actually been, I think one of the ones that they told me was somebody put a taxidermied frog. Um, in one of them so that's funny <laughs> but they open it up and make sure everything's okay to travel and then they package it and then they wrap tape around it and everything and then it gets put in a box you can even if you do this online you can even track your shoe box and tell what country it's going to so it's really interesting um, if you homeschool this is an excellent lesson for your kids not only in the spirit of giving but also you know you can teach them about find out what country it's going to you can talk about geography, traveling, you can study the customs of that country, and most importantly, pray for that child. And you know, the children that receive these are praying for you too. And that's pretty amazing. So I'll talk to y'all later. I hope you will pack a shoe box, change a life, there's a miracle in every box. Love you. Bye-bye.